beautiful blue macaw named Grover, and Grover has been stolen from his cage. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you tuned in today. It's a beautiful day to be alive. For you, we have a new story about a stolen hyacinth macaw. His name is Glover, and last week he got stolen out of his cage in Texas, Houston. Hey everyone, Charlie Ed City here with ABC 13 coming to you this afternoon from the Memorial neighborhood uh, here in Houston. Um, a sad story we have to report here at five o'clock. You can see behind me this missing poster. This is actually a bird named Grover that lived just back there in this cage that's on this property. And it actually appears according to his owner that he was taken sometime on Friday evening. And so the owners are hoping to get the word out about this missing bird and hopefully he will be brought home safely. And so I wanna show you the uh, missing poster here so you can get a close look at what I'm talking about. And so this is Grover. He is, um, from what the owner tells me, a pretty rare macaw and beautiful bird, bright blue feathers. You can see with the, just a little bit of yellow around, looks like its eyes and around its beak. Um, and so this macaw, according to the owner, is a pretty rare bird and is very, very expensive, probably about $10,000. And so this owner said that this bird went missing from his cage, which is right there, uh, sometime he thinks on Friday night. The owner's dog, um, who is just right back in that area, you can actually see in the surveillance footage the dog barking and going nuts because he heard the bird screaming as uh, whoever came in here and, and took him. So it's just a sad story. We're hoping to get the word out and show this bird's picture so that somebody may recognize him, maybe on Craigslist or somebody trying to sell this bird and make some money. Hopefully somebody can recognize this bird, track him down and help reunite him with his owner uh, because the owner said this is like his child, his child. He's had him for over 10 years and this bird and him have really bonded and connected. And so it was just heartbreaking to hear him talk about how much he misses his bird and is hoping that somebody will recognize him and tell police and get him home safely and so the owner lives on the property he has this blue beautiful blue macaw named Grover and Grover has been stolen from his cage it's crazy because bird napping is really really a serious crime and it's real it's real and people are out to get birds all the time because they're expensive they're exotics And right now we are in, we have a treat for you because we are gonna talk exclusively with the owner who got his car stolen, his highness at my car. His name is Sean. Hey Sean, this is Caroline. Hi Caroline, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Um, Sean, do you have FaceTime or Skype so I can see you? Yeah, hang on one second. Okay, so I have a couple of questions, like I was following you on Facebook and when I saw the news I was like devastated and I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe your highness and macaw gets stolen because I free fly my macaw hope and there's always people trying to steal him in free fly mode, like in the park. So, but your bird was in a cage, right? And he got stolen in a cage. Right, out right. of the cage and when I saw that um, so when I saw that I was like oh my gosh we have to educate people I have a little audience a bird right. audience on, on, on YouTube and I thought like people have to know the truth that there are really thieves out there who are after to make a little buck out of our precious birds so I yeah. thought like you know this is a great story to tell so we can educate other people to be really aware that there are theft out there there are people who have nothing good in mind and who really wants to harm yeah. just to make a fast yeah. buck first question what happened we were in california filming a uh, one of our dog films called the last astronaut which we basically film a lot of animal movies and we got the word i think it was friday uh, afternoon at about 8.40 is when it happened, but we didn't hear about it till Saturday morning. That was uh, because one of the 
dancers, we have a dance studio. Say Grover wasn't there, and everybody loves Grover, and they were curious. The first thought was, did uh, during class time, see Grover escape or something? And that has never happened, but a possibility. He was wondering where I was, being away. Uh, but then we noticed that the way this the cage was, you know, high schools can break through a lot of amazingly strong structures. I, in the 11 years I've had, Grover's never wanted to leave the cage. If I take him out, he goes back in because it's an atrium. It's pretty big. So um, he usually hangs out in the office. Oh, with there he is. <laughs> uh, he's gorgeous. You know, isn't he pretty? So he, he's a very sweet guy. Aren't you sweet? You want to come up here? Come on. So he, he very much loves his daddy. Um, and that's probably one of the big things about Grover, besides him being super big, is that uh, he definitely has a, a, an easy person. Yeah, Hynissons are the gentle giants, the gentle blue giants. Plus, they are very, very um, sweet and calm and loving. When, and of course, when they're treated right, you know, any, any animal will get uh, difficult if they're not, as you know, and everybody in the audience knows from following you. But the thing about Grover is he was resistant to the thieves because we caught on camera uh, my dog Max barking, going crazy. Uh, I saw that footage. Footage, right. Yeah. And, and Max and him have grown up together. I got them about the same time. So they're both 11 years old. 11 going on 12. Uh, and so they grew up together. Very good. I saw all your effort. That see, ABC is thirteen. The channel came out right, and yeah. they brought it the, in the news. A few news stations came out. ABC did a practically. They did a big uh, report Sunday night. I was on the phone with them, and then they came out Monday morning along with a few other stations. Uh, and, and just by chance, they wanted to do a live remote at four o'clock on uh, on Monday. And then another live remote at five, and at five is when I got the call from the guy who had it. So it was actually live on air. Wow. And the, the ABC had, this guy's coming, they check back with me. Okay, we just got finished with the, with the, uh, the, with this section of the news, now back to you. We kept going back and forth, hoping the guy would show up, and, and he did. He pulled up, uh, I guess around 5.30. Said that early tomorrow morning, a fence is going to be going up around his property. He had a white car, he had it in the car, and he had like a group of people around the car. And I went over and I saw it was like a rare bird, and he wanted 600 bucks. I said, I got it right now. Boom! I got it, through, had him put a throat in the car. How are you feeling right now? Uh, amazing. And John, thank you. Come here, buddy. Watch out for my bike. Oh, that's okay. Thank you so much, buddy. You're welcome. You're home, Bubba? Huh? Home with Daddy? 
Oh, bless your heart. He's home. <laughs> I know. You okay? You okay to your papa? Huh? You okay? Daddy. Thank you for coming home to daddy, huh? Yeah, it is him like this little skin tag on his mouth. Yeah, he's all set. I need Wait, so oh my gosh. Yeah, Did he sad. say like anything about where he got him or anything? Well, he said that he's leaving town and he needs to sell his bird and he's like not gonna take it. I was just like I didn't need to hear too many too many. I, I would have bought it. I don't care what he said. Yeah, yeah. So y'all are bird lovers? <laughs> I mean, look at the bird. I don't care what he said. He said he's leaving town is what he told me and he's selling the bird. Yeah, either way, either, either way, you were going to either get a bird or you were going to bring it back he home. He didn't say he stole it, obviously. Yeah. I still would have bought it, though. Yeah, thank, well, let me come in, come in and get yeah. get you all. I still would have bought it, regardless, you know? Appreciate that. Yeah, to be honest. Come on, Baba. Here. No. Hey. All right. All right. Okay, so the guy, was it just a cold call? And like, how did you know that this lead was legit? I, I actually did not. Oh, there's Max. He's... Oh, he's so cute. Yeah, so um, I actually, he's, he's panting right now. It's so hot and used to even though. But go over there and go say hi to mommy. I didn't, I didn't know it was legit. Uh, in fact, I got so many calls from different people all over the country. You know, some just, you know, just random calls. Your number's out there. People are calling yep. about this bird. But I didn't. But he seemed in his voice, and because I heard a bird squawk in the background and recognized his voice, mm -hmm. that's Grover's voice, I felt a little bit different about this. Okay. Wow. I'm getting chills right now. It's just so amazing. How big are the chances to get your bird back once it's stolen? It's, it's crazy. So um, what happened? The guy came over and then you called a news channel and they came over too? No, the news channel had been out there all afternoon. Oh, wow. So this was like the first time for this girl to report uh, for ABC. This is her, her, her story. And just by happen chance, uh, the story unfolded to where the reuniting of the bird and me occurred live, you know, at, at the top of the hour, so. And just a couple of minutes ago, the person who had Grover, the missing macaw, just pulled up, they're in that car right there, just pulled up and reunited Grover with his owner, Sean, who has been worried sick about him for several days now. Uh, wow, it's a pretty happy reunion. Um, Sean basically plastered Grover's face all over missing posters, all over Houston, um, just desperately trying to get his bird back. This bird has been with him for several years and he loves him and says that he's a rare macaw and that is like his child, basically. And so we just saw a very happy reunion between Grover and his owner. Um, wow, that was pretty awesome. And so from what I could gather from the gentleman who dropped him off just now, it sounds like he randomly bought him off the street from somebody who was trying to sell Grover. So it sounds like he bought him for about 600 bucks is what I gathered just now and we're gonna get more details um, from him in just a second. But it does sound like somebody was selling this bird on the street according to the guy who just dropped him off and that's uh, how this guy ended up getting in possession of Grover. And so we're gonna stay on this for uh, for the six o'clock show and so we'll keep you updated we're going to definitely keep you updated so stay with me here on the social channels we're trying to get more uh updates here on what exactly happened so, i mean that of course is the important thing the important thing is grover's home safe right but there, there is some irony in the story that i think plays out so what's the irony well i think first off they were doing a live remote there when the guy showed up that was ironic too uh the guy didn't ask for the reward of ten thousand dollars he wow. didn't want it uh, three, uh, he's a bird lover, and he saw the bird in the back of a car over on Westheimer at Gary Ashford, where it's kind of almost a flea market setting. Wow. And somebody was trying to sell the bird. He was giving salted um, sunflower. sunflower seeds, which are not good, especially in the heat, not good for the, the parrot to begin with, and the guy knew. So he bought the parrot for six hundred dollars. He did bought it because in the news channel it sounds like he snacked the bird away. Yeah, he bought. He spent six hundred. Well, that was what he told me, and I believe that's what happened. Okay. So I, I have every reason to do do everything but believe what this guy says. 
and look at him as a hero. Right. Wow. We, we, can, we can have all kinds of interpretations of this or that, but that's what the bottom line is. He bought the bird back, one. Yep. Two, did not want the reward. Three, when the guy pulled up, the parrot was not in a cage or a, a carrier of some sort. He was sitting on the seat headrest on the passenger side, and his two family members were in the back seat. Grover was in the front seat on the passenger side on the headrest, riding with the guy in a Mercedes. And they pull up, and the car goes like this, and Grover looks at me. <laughs> and this is all live, and I run up, and I... Oh, my gosh. Grover hops in my arms and he cuddles right down. Uh. And he's like this, and um, uh, and so it, it was a it was a fairy tale story come true. Wow. So. I'm so happy. When I saw it, you know, I shared, I think, in three or four different parrot groups. And then I also shared on my parrot group. I have like 37,000 followers on Dino DeLore. And then I have a free flight uh, parrot group. So I shared it there as well to bring awareness out. And I, I, I told explicitly, like, my people, please share and pray for the safe return of Grover. It's really upsetting because my friend has two high nissens who's free flight trained. And they, they are the most gentle, most beautiful beautiful birds ever, Chen the Birdman, and he free flies them. So, you know, Hynissons are very delicate, beautiful animals. Like, oh, they are just like gorgeous. So when I saw the news, I was like, oh my God, you got it back. Like how? I wanted to know every detail. And then I saw on safe, uh, no, uh, um, get lower back your Facebook page. Yeah. That you created. I saw yeah. some new stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. No, wow. We're just... Oh, this is my wife, and uh, this is Bam Bam. Oh, hi! Oh, my gosh. Hi, Bam Bam. Bam Bam Bam's waving, and he is, as you can see, super sweet guy. Yeah. Just, just the sweetest little guy. Oh, he looks sweet. Yeah. So sweet. And I'll, I'll have to give you a tour of the, the our home. We practically designed it as a treehouse uh, for the birds to feel at home because they we're in our office right now, but uh, this is the night cage. But we, we planted bamboo all around. Wow. They're trying to make it very tropical. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a little teeny tree house really. And they come in here, and uh, this is our kitchen, and Bam Bam sits up here. Oh! <laughs> so while we're cooking, Bam Bam likes to help Mom do the dishes. Oh! Isn't that right, Bam Bam? Huh? Oh! Beautiful. Anyways. But, uh, and Grover sleeps with me next to my bed now on the perch. And it's, it's, we just got a, even a stronger bond than we've had before. It's a little outdoor shower, but um, the birds can take an outdoor shower with us. Aww. And, whoop, just flew off. Come on, Bubba, let's go. Okay. Oh, that's Grover. Beautiful. So, Sean. Yeah. What did you learn out of this incident? Like, what would you give away to um, our audience watching? Well, the first thing, even though we have Grover set up to be in an environment, our, my main thing about Grover's interaction, the reason why I think he's a healthy bird is he has lots of interaction with the students. Uh, uh, but higher security system, so we just built Hey guys, we're just putting a fencing system up, so security, and we're putting a new locking system on the uh, visiting atrium, mm -hmm. um, so intense security is the next thing that I've learned I need to do. I only take responsibility, I don't really put the responsibility on anybody else, so what can I do to ever prevent this from happening again? You can give a bird as much love as you want. But it's a crazy world out there. We've got to protect these guys. Yeah. People that mistreat them. Yeah. So that's my lesson learned. But, uh, because th this is something that 
broke our hearts, broke the hearts of all the dancers in the community, uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna protect them very closely. Yeah, very nice. That's really good. Yeah, here in California, bird theft is on a rise. It's a high. People even break into pet stores and steal my cars. Um, I think two or three months ago in Morita, San Diego, there was a, a break in and they snagged three macaws off the off off the pet store. And then here at a pet shop downtown in in I think somewhere in Sherman Oaks or Burbank. Bird Plus, there was also a man caught on camera. He came in as a customer, and then there was, you know, like nowadays, my cars are not in the cage. They're just out in the center, so they can play in a tree and stuff like that in the pet shop. And this guy, he just came with a bag and snacked the bird over the back, uh, in the back, and just took off. Like, bird theft is, it's really scary. Uh, well, I, I think that now with even more exposure, the fact Grover is here, it's going to be some really intense security around here. Good. Um, that's what I'm walking away with this. I also know, I loved Grover before, but not having him has made me so much more closer to him mm -hmm. and appreciating his existence. So there's the benefit there. Um, but overall, I'm just so blessed to have my little boy back. Mm -hmm. And I'm thrilled. So there's that. Wow. So the, the hero... Um, you you said he didn't want any reward. Did you give him like the six hundred dollars back, or yeah, he didn't even ask for it? But I took him I, after we got he, when he bought the bird. He was talking. Did I said you need to come back? I didn't give you six. I gave him six hundred plus in gas money because he drove a long way. I, I, honestly, I didn't even think he needed that, but it was the, it's the right thing for me to do anyways to come clean with the issue. Um, but he definitely could have asked for the full reward and just said it's not right. You know, this bird just needs to be home. Sean, he said to me, I really would rather not have any money and just keep Grover. I fell in love with him over the past two days. But when I saw the notice, uh, I knew that was the right thing to do. I went to his Facebook and it, it, the, a few hours before he arrived, it said, sometimes doing the right thing is the hardest thing to do. Wow. So basically he did bought... Yeah, so basically he did bought the bird, so he would be the rightful owner. But the bird, because it was stolen, it's not really a clear slate. Right, he did mention that. That was kind of a small conversation, but we did do a police report. And because we did a police report, uh, it is a stolen uh, bird. Mm. Uh, it also, uh, there was an investigation on the bird because of the value amounts over a certain amount. Uh, the police do an investigation. Mm -hmm. And that happens to be 10000 or more for a uh, stolen item, which he really is an item. He's a, he's a guy, but... Uh, that investigation was ongoing until we actually got everything taken care of. So is Glover Chip or Bandit or both? Uh, he is a Bandit, um, but we are taking him to get chipped right away. So that's the, one of the other things we need to do. But I think as much as Heises look alike, mm -hmm. I know Grover is Grover. Yeah. Yeah. You know your boy. You so. know your personality. You know him. And that's all his marks. Yeah. Wonderful. So. I'm so glad he's home. Like, wow, what a miracle. This is a miracle. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's a crazy miracle. And the, the, everybody was so supportive. We didn't realize how many bird lovers there are out there. Your community that mm -hmm. you're in tune with is giant. Yeah. It's also, it's also an animal community, which we have a, we have a pretty big uh, connection with the, the dog community. Mm, okay. Um, so that's our, our kind of niche isn't necessarily birds but dogs we we have extreme closeness to our to our dogs like crazy um and ranger ranger is a golden retriever is a service dog because i have epilepsy and so he's travels all over the country with me mm -hmm. uh, very close and it's hard to leave our animals so mm -hmm. um it's nice to at least be able to take one of them with us yeah it's also like once you don't know the value of 
the bird if it's just there, but once it's gone, like there's this heartbreak, this emptiness, the depression that sets in, that you just feel like there's no purpose anymore without the bird. You know, you need him back because he's part of your life. I have never felt such emotional connection or even spiritual connection with a bird, with any any other animal, dog or cat, except with birds. So like bird has a more like deeper connection with humans and once they are gone it's just this heartbreaking agony that you know people are in if if they get stolen or lying away or if they are lost or something like that or if they die it's just really painful 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 experience so yeah. i'm happy that you guys <laughs> you guys yeah, you have a happy end less is how much we love grover we didn't realize it we know how much we love our dogs but now we love, know how much grover means to us he's always been there but now it, you start to think this isn't a bird, this is a six year old brain. Grover's brain, I, I think, is about a six year old assimilation. So he knew he was in danger. He was afraid. He knew he wasn't at home. He, it's like having your child abducted, your six year old child yeah. abducted. Yeah. And so you got to frame it in those ways for the general public to understand this isn't a bird, this is a soul. Yeah. Uh, my, my wife is, uh, is even a more of an animal spiritual person she's incredibly in tune she has um mr uh mr snorty downstairs in, in the yard he comes up every morning he's a beautiful pig uh and it's just cute and sweet and loving it's kind of a symbol uh to not eat meat for her uh, she has such a great approach to to animals i'm just blessed to to have married her and we're having a baby in three oh, months. Oh my so, gosh, I'm a little out of America. <laughs> our first baby. So oh, that's we're fantastic. Glad, we're glad Grover's going to be around here to have um, our, our, our baby. We called, it, we called her Charlie. We're going to call her Charlie. Oh, little sister. Gonna be awesome part of the, the whole family. Wow, wow. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. But. You know, you did the right thing. Once it's lost, you need to get people involved. And you did the right thing. You go straight to the media. And they have the most power to go out to blast it out to the nation. So that was like number one that you got all the media involved and people searching and printing flyers, getting a whole search rescue, um, like, you know, force out there. Like, amazing. Because you are responsible to bring your bird back. Only you. And... Uh then you know there's and and you did your work you you did your homework right you did everything right and wow amazing <laughs> and we had a lot of people contact contact us community support groups that also told us what to do and we acted on it so it's mm. and you know my wife the whole organization here in, in this company worked as a team um but i'm glad you you see that being a, a good uh, step that we took Team effort. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Can you see him? Yeah. Hi, Gomer. <laughs> I'm so happy you are home. Do you want to meet Hope? You see what? You want to come see? Do you want to meet my bird? My bird? I have a Catalina macaw. Oh, do you really? Yeah. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this segment. Don't forget to... <laughs> I hope you don't eat the camera. <laughs> hope tries to eat the camera. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this segment. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, hit the like button, hit the notification button so you don't miss any episode, and subscribe and comment below. Let me know what you think. And if you can, please go to Sean's website and or go to Sean's channel. And if you can, go to Sean's channel and subscribe to him as well. <laughs> hope is right now here trying to eat this camera. But for now, this is it, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. We're, always, we're at the toy store for Grover, picking out a few fun things after all he's been through.